Intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating has been one of the most popular and one of the hottest trends for weight loss and nutritional interventions. And for good reason, for a number of people it works, there's science backing that it works and it helps people lose weight, improve their body composition and improve their metabolic health. But in recent times, there's been a couple studies which kind of call into question whether time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting are truly effective and whether they increase the risk of losing lean body mass. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director of dietdoctor.com, and I want to talk about these uh, studies, one in particular that recently came out published in Science and Translational Medicine, and an older one published in, in JAMA. Uh, talk about the differences uh, between these studies and what they may mean for you and what they may mean for the effectiveness of intermittent fasting. So first, let's look at this one in Science and Translational Medicine in June of 2021. Now, the conclusion of this study was that intermittent fasting was no more effective than chronic caloric restriction and, in fact, could increase the risk of losing lean body mass. Now, when we're losing weight, we want to lose mostly fat mass and maintain or minimally lose our lean body mass because the lean body mass is what keeps us stronger, more metabolically active, more likely to help us utilize glucose better, and the fat mass is what we don't want, certainly the visceral fat or the abdominal obesity. But again, the conclusion of this study was alternate day fasting is less effectively reduces body fat mass than a matched degree of daily energy restriction and without evidence of fasting specific effects on metabolic regulation or cardiovascular health. Basically saying alternate day fasting was of no benefit, okay? But let's look at this study. So it was a randomized controlled trial that examined 24 hour fasting with 150% energy intake on alternate days for three weeks in lean, healthy individuals. In my mind, that's all we need to know right there to say this trial is not applicable to 99% of the people who are doing intermittent fasting, right? Right away, we can sort of say, this doesn't apply to you. Why? Lean, healthy individuals. Who's recommending alternate day fasting to lean, healthy individuals? I guess there's this, there's this um, set of people some people call them biohackers, you know, that's got such a negative term now, but the set of people who are trying to optimize their longevity and, and using fasting protocols for longevity. But that's very different than using fasting protocols for weight loss, for reversing type two diabetes or improving blood sugar control, for reducing blood pressure, for improving PCOS or whatever the case may be. That's a very different situation. So right away, when you're dealing with lean, healthy individuals, your data is not going to be applicable to the majority of the people using intermittent fasting. And the second is it's alternate day fasting, which means one day you eat nothing and the next day you eat normally. Only here, they're not even doing that. They're saying one day you eat nothing and the next day you eat more than you normally would to sort of make up for the calories that you lost on that fasting day. But that also doesn't make sense to me because when you're doing a fasting protocol to help somebody lose weight, a big part of it is caloric reduction, being able to do caloric reduction in a safe and sustainable way, right? So if you don't eat anything one day, the next day you eat your normal amount and basically you've reduced your calories by 50% in aggregate, but hopefully doing it in a way that doesn't lower your resting metabolic rate, that um, actually raises your growth hormone, that can help you maintain your lean body mass and help improve your metabolic function. This trial didn't study that, right? So that's one of my problems where when I see a conclusion that, see, fasting doesn't work. This trial shows that fasting doesn't work. Well, no, it doesn't. It took one very sort of esoteric, specific way of fasting in a group where you wouldn't really even apply this protocol to in the first place, and showed it doesn't really help in that setting. So I, I hope this puts this trial into perspective because yes, it tells us some things about fasting, right? I don't wanna throw it out. It tells us if you're lean and you're healthy and you're doing an alternate day fasting, you're likely not going to lose um, body fat. You're not gonna improve your metabolic health. But if you're starting from a baseline where you don't really have to lose that much body fat and you don't have to Im dramatically improve your metabolic health, okay, you know, what, then you shouldn't do it. That's lesson learned, right? We can take that away from this study. But what does that mean for you if you're trying to improve your blood sugar control with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, or if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to lose visceral fat, this study doesn't really tell you anything about that. For that, we have to go back to the, the intermittent fasting trials that looked at people who were overweight, the majority of which show benefit for body composition, that you lose body mass and can retain lean, I'm sorry, that you lose body fat mass and can retain lean body mass. 
um, that you do improve your metabolic parameters. But of course, there was one other study, which we have covered before, from Dr. Ethan Weiss and Dylan Lowe and, and colleagues um, that was published in JAMA Internal Medicine back in September of 2020. And this was better in the sense that the people enrolled here had body mass index between 27 and 43. They were overweight, right? This is the type of person you would do um, an intermittent fasting or a time-restricted eating protocol on as a clinician to try and help them improve their health. There were 116 participants, and, and basically they were just told to do a time-restricted eating protocol and with almost no other guidance or interventions. And, and that's important because, again, what happened was even if they stuck to their time-restricted eating protocol, they ended up eating more calories than the control group. Right? And because there was and there was no no guidance on what to eat. So the quality of their meals were completely unknown. So it brings back the point that one benefit of time restricted eating is a sustainable way to reduce your calories. And if it doesn't do that, then you're not getting the full benefit. Now, could there be other benefits of just having time without nutrition coming in so your insulin gets lower? Sure. That is a potential mechanistic benefit that isn't proven, you know, that that is clearly the way time restricted eating works. But this study also doesn't prove that it's not, right? What it means is if you're, if you're still eating more calories than you normally would, and if the quality of your food isn't high quality in terms of weight loss foods, then maybe you need to fast even more. You need to sort of pull that fasting lever even harder to fast for maybe the alternate day fasting in this group. Maybe the time-restricted eating doesn't matter. But what if you do time-restricted eating and it helps you sustainably reduce your calories and when you are eating food, you're eating healthy weight loss foods that help you improve your lean body mass, reduce your body fat mass, uh, maintain your resting metabolic rate, help your metabolic health. If you're eating those types of foods and doing time-restricted eating, maybe that's an additive benefit. So um, while we don't have the quality of science to say that's for certain, we also don't have the quality of science to say time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting don't work because these studies have holes in them as all studies do. Um, you know, the, at least in this study in JAMA Network Open, or just sorry, JAMA Internal Medicine, the, the patient population was the right population. The protocol was a very sort of, you could call it a weak protocol. It's, it's a mild protocol, which is good to test because anybody can do that, right? Eat whatever you want, eat however much you want, just don't eat in this time window. It's so easy, everybody can do that, but maybe that's not as effective. Whereas the previous study, that was just sort of, I don't know, that was destined to fail from the beginning with the wrong patient population, uh, an esoteric intervention for that patient population. Uh, I don't see why that would work or why we would even care really. So um, interpretation of the studies is important. Please put it into context. Please don't throw out time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting. They can be part of a very healthy um, weight loss program to help with metabolic health, to help with lean body mass, to help with overall health. And we have resources to guide you at dietdoctor.com, whether it's our personalized meal planner, right? Our personalized meal planner, which helps design the right type of um, diet and food and recipes for you, but you can also factor in how many meals you want. If you only want two meals, if you're gonna practice time-restricted eating, you can, you can adjust it on your own to fit an alternate day fasting program. And we have guides on fasting, we, we have, um, certainly guides on healthy weight loss um, and how to incorporate that with intermittent fasting. So if you're interested in fasting, please go to dietdoctor.com, check out all those resources. You're gonna get the science and you're gonna get the context and the nuance to see if it can apply to you and see how you can, um, uh, how you can implement it today to start seeing health benefits, all right? Uh, if you thought this was helpful, click the thumbs up and the subscribe button and please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.